round. So these are the arcuate blood vessels going this way. And then they give off these little branches that go straight out and they radiate out, radiate out into the cortex of the kidney. So why don't we call them the cortical radiate arteries. Get it? There's also cortical radiate veins. So these little guys going out this way are kind of where it's at, these cortical radiate arteries, um, because that is what's going to carry the blood to the renal corpuscles, which is the first part of the nephron. This is what they look like in a magnified view. They didn't show that on the last picture, but it looks like this. So here comes your inner lobar artery. It becomes the arcuate artery, gives off these renal corticate arteries, and these renal corticate arteries then give off these little bitty um, branches that go to these little guys right here that we're going to find that each one of these is a nephron, is a corpuscle, a renal corpuscle. And they're, they're nothing more than a little glom of blood vessels, a bunch of arteries kind of coiled up in there. And uh, we're going to pump blood through them, and that's where urine is actually going to start being made. We have two kinds of nephrons uh, that you need to be aware of. One is called the cortical nephrons, and notice this is the um, beginning of it right here. And the, the nephrons kind of have a, uh, the glomerulus is right up in here, and then they kind of wander around a little bit, and then they take a dive down towards the middle of the kidney, and they come down here and they come back. And then they're going to finally, when they're done processing urine, and this is three days down the road for us here, it's going to come down this last trip down through these. This last trip down is through what's called the collecting tubules, and it's going to e exit the kidney right there at the tip. But the cortical nephrons are significant in because they, are, they completely stay out of the medulla, okay, until that last trip down. So the cortical nephrons have a short, what we call a loop of Henle. We'll go through this in a minute. But this is the loop of Henle, and for cortical nephrons, that stays up and out in the cortex totally. The other ones, there's about 85% of, of these guys are this kind, only about 15% of this kind, uh, although we're going to talk more about these. These are called the juxtamedullary nephrons. Juxtamedullary means they're just about in the medulla, okay, juxtamedullary. So there they are, right there near the line, and they have very long loops of Henle that goes way down deep and then comes back up and then makes the final pass as well. Now, the reason those are so important is because that's how we concentrate our urine. Okay, um, our, our blood, you know, what's the osmolarity of our blood? How many milliosmoles per liter do we have in our blood, in our plasma, and all these things, in our cells, in our cytoplasm, in our nucleus? Kara, what's normal osmolarity for our bodies? I don't know. Ah! Anybody? No, nobody knows. God damn it, why do we make you guys take 112? Yeah. Why do we make you take 231? Is it, I have a guess. Is it 500? No. That okay, was a Daisy very know. bad <laughs> guess. No. <laughs> Daisy doesn't know right. well. It's 300. It's Write that down. Normal osmolarity is 300. And you remember the reason osmolarity is important because you remember that little process that you spent all that time learning about in 112 called osmosis? And remember what osmosis is? What is the definition of osmosis, Brenda? Oh, God. Oh, God, no. A diffusion across the semi permeable. It's diffusion of what? Water. Water across a semi permeable membrane, right? And so our bodies, every membrane in our body, every cell membrane, every nuclear membrane is basically a semi permeable membrane which will allow a certain amount of water to go in. And, and push a certain amount out depending on the osmolarity of the solution, right? So if it's well, more than 300, if our cells are really concentrated, more water will diffuse in to dilute that down to an osmolarity of about 300. 
if the osmolarity in our cells is too high, let's say it's too low, that means we have too much water and it will allow the water to diffuse out until the osmolarity is back to 300 again. So you got to know that number. We're going to be talking a lot about osmolarities as we go through this kidney. Yeah. Is there a unit to go along with 300? Yeah, milliosmoles per liter. Thank you. Huh? How do you write that? O M S O L M O S L milliosmol. I'm sure it'll be on one of my powerpoints. Okay. That's how I remember everything, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, you should be able to write this out, folks. Uh, it sounds kind of silly, but we're going to talk about it enough that it'll make sense to you. Uh, the blood comes in through the renal artery, goes through those segmental arteries, goes through those interlobar arteries, hits the arcuate arteries, goes sideways, goes through what's called the cortical radiate arteries, those guys that go up. And as they go up there and they come to those little clusters that you saw on that one drawing, we call that the afferent arterioles. In other words, afferent means afferent means approaching, right? And efferent means exiting, right? Approaching, afferent, efferent, exiting. So these little afferent arterioles, which we really haven't shown you yet, but they're really tiny, they go into each of these glomeruli, and the glomerulus then, uh, the, the blood kind of runs through this glom of little tiny blood vessels in there, and then uh, it goes out through the efferent arteriole to get out of the glomerulus, and then it goes out and goes through these guys called peritubular capillaries, which are just little capillaries that are all around that, this area, and then they collect it into venules, and then cortical radiate veins, and arcuate veins, and lobar veins, and back to the renal vein, and back to the vena cava. Okay, so the part of the big deal here is these afferent arterioles and these efferent arterioles. Okay, so the whole idea of this blood vessel setup in the kidney is to send blood to these little guys called renal corpuscles, okay? And they have an afferent arteriole going into it, and they have an efferent arteriole that comes out of it, okay? More pictures to come. Urine is basically done in three different ways. There's three basic processes here. The first one, and the one we're gonna talk by far and away the most about, is the very first stage of urine creation, and it is called filtration. Now, filtration means just like what it says. You take water, you take blood, right, and you pour it on a piece of filter paper, and some stuff comes out, right? The stuff that doesn't come out of the arteries, you, the arteries, one thing you might figure is not going to leak out is well, protein, some of them are going to leak out, I have to tell you, but that's a good answer. What's the main thing that's not going to come out? <coughs> huh? No. The red cells. Yeah, that's right, the big red cells. They're, you don't want to filter your red cells out. You want them to stay in your blood, okay? So they do. Um, and I think the, the reason I brought that little question up right then is because I want you to realize that filtration is really kind of a stupid process. There's not a lot of thinking that goes on. In other words, if stuff is too big to fit through the slits, the little holes in the filtration membrane, it'll go through. Water goes through. A lot of albumin, a lot of the smaller proteins. All the ions go through. Sugar even goes through. But that's it. And then we go into the other phases of, of renal function. One is called reabsorption. And what renal absorption means, reabsorption means that, okay, you've let all this stuff come through. Now we're going to start pulling back what we want. We're going to re-put it back into our bodies. We're going to reabsorb it. And that's pretty smart. We have smart little pumps that pump back certain things back in, like sugars, like proteins, if any of them got out 
lot of the enzymes, I mean a lot of the electrolytes, the sodium, the hydrogen to correct the pH and stuff. So reabsorption is kind of a smart, uh, more smart process. And then finally, the third part, which we'll talk about several days from now, is called secretion. Now what secretion means is that, okay, we filtered all this stuff through, we reabsorbed the stuff we wanted to reabsorb, but then there's still some other stuff that we just don't want in our bodies. And we've got to get rid of it. So we have active pumps that are very specific that can pump that stuff out. And the stuff we pump out and put it into the urine to get it rid of, get rid of it, get it out of our body, that's called secretion. Okay? Now that these two terms can be kind of confusing if you if you don't think about them just right. Just remember, reabsorption is pulling stuff back into our body that we want to hang on to. Secretion is actively secreting things into the urine to get rid of them. Not just based on size like the filtration deal. Okay? All right, so let's talk about this nephron thing for a minute. And uh, here we go. I told my class this morning, I was writing on the board, and I said, you know, I am the world's worst artist, and I have the world's worst handwriting, but every year, at the end of every term, I get these student evaluation forms that you guys all fill out. You know, he was too hard, or he made us read too much. You know, and, you, and a lot of them are really good. I, I have to say, I get wonderful evaluations from most of my students. And this one student made a comment a couple, three years ago that I—it's I, just stopped me dead in my tracks. I told you this story before. And you guys heard this story? Yeah. Yeah. He or she—I have no—I never know who writes any of this stuff. Dr. Sessions never writes on the board enough. He needs to write on the board more. He needs to draw more pictures. And I thought about that, and I thought about it, and I thought, are you kidding me? They want to write me to write on the board and draw pictures? Here we go. <laughs> the real nephron. All right, we got that artery, that cortical radiate artery coming out here, right? And that cortical radiate artery is going to come out here, and it's going to go to this little bitty artery. And uh, let's see, this is a cortical radiate artery. And it's going to come out here to these little clusters that you saw in that previous picture. And we're going to call this one the afferent arteriole. Afferent arteriole means it's going to the glomerulus, okay? And when I say glomerulus, what I want you to think of is glom. It's a glom of little bitty arter ar arterioles that are wadded up into a glom, okay? So here this guy comes, the afferent arteriole comes out here, and it empties into this glom thing that kind of goes around like this and goes around like this and around like this, and uh, so forth. And then at the end of this whole glom thing, it's going to come out. And let's draw it coming out over here. And so if this was the afferent arteriole, this one is going to be called the efferent arteriole. So this is the efferent arteriole. Now the Point is, they are both arterioles. It's not an artery going in and a vein coming back. They're both arterioles. This is a high pressure system. This is arterial pressure. Okay? All right, so this big cluster called the glomerulus, um, is a combination of, I don't know, 20, 25 little wrapped around little bitty arterioles before it go, from the time it goes in to the time it goes out. And around this whole thing, is kind of a little cup-like thing like this. 
and this is going to be the beginning of the urinary tract. So what are we going to call this thing here? Nephron. The beginning of the nephron. Renal the renal corpuscle is the whole thing. Doesn't it have a capsule? What? Doesn't it have a capsule? It has a capsule, yeah. I don't know. Well, class is over. Quiz in ten minutes. Whoa! Holy shit! Wow! You might want to turn it off and on again. Mm. Man. I was just getting ready to get rolling on this thing, too, you know? <laughs> Put in a whole bunch of blank slides is what it did. Y'all see that? Yeah. Anybody else have one of these that they've got in their pocket that they're pushing on? <laughs> Make sure I, I do have two of them. Because that's not part of the issue. Well, my granddaughter, uh, her soccer team lost last night in the second round of the state playoffs. 
They lost to West Lynn. West Lynn was, was a better team than them, so that was okay. But, um, yeah, that was my, that was my evening. This is 233, our class here. And let's go up there and do content. I, I, I want to, during lab, like, go through it because that's, I looked at it and went, no. You get a few points. Yeah, Especially the ones when it's like six, A, B, or D. And I'm like, are those the correct? So you're in there in February 13th. Yeah, Someone who was there for yeah, it with me for fat time. Yeah, but they have to come since then. We'll try that version. I mean, an 82 still isn't bad, so, you know, whatever. Everything else is just going to be. <coughs> <coughs> That's from blood draw from my first baby appointment. That was a, that's a legal. That was last Tuesday, not yesterday. Oh no, my veins were horrible. She finally she called the nurse, and the nurse is like, "Okay, crack, crack. We're gonna do this. I'm getting the big needle." And I was like, oh, my God. And she was like. I'm sorry, this will probably hurt. So she had two tourniquets tied on. We had heat packs all over my arm. And she was, and she's like, okay, take the heat pack off on three, I'm gonna go quick. And I was like, yeah. You know the tomato on your salad plate, if you're really gentle, it just rolls around, you just gotta kinda take the fork and stab it. She's like, yeah, I'm like, get it, girl. She said, you're good with pain? And I'm like, I'm good with pain. She's like, okay, go. Just pop. Okay, here we go. Because they tried a couple times on both arms. I'm abandoning my little picture there for a minute, and we'll go through a couple of yeah. slides here, and then I think they'll give us some better pictures than what I can draw for you up there. So, let's talk about the nephron. The nephron is this long tube that's coming out here out of the this glomerulus. It's kind of the cup sits around and called the capsule. Mm -hmm. And it comes in here and it enters into this area which is called the proximal convoluted, convoluted tubule, the PCT. And then the tubule is going to go way down, down here and back up. And this is called the loop of Henle. And this is called the descending loop. And this is called the ascending loop. And then this is going to come up here, and it's going to go to another little convoluted area, which we will call the distal convoluted tubule, the DCT. And then it will enter the last time into a collection of nephrons, will enter into a thing called a collecting duct over here. The collecting duct will then go down to the tip of the pyramid, empty out into the pelvis, and at that point, we call it urine, okay? Until that point, we just call it filtrate, okay? So it's important that you kind of keep those names in mind. The nephron consists of the tubule, which is all of this stuff over here, all these tubules, and the glom, the glomerulus, right here. The renal corpuscle, the definition of the renal corpuscles, and you'll see these when you go to the lab and you look under the microscope, you'll see these corpuscles all over the place, and they look like this, pretty much. They look like a whole wad of little arteries, and they're surrounded by a capsule. Now, it's, it's really thin stuff. This stuff, everything here is only one cell layer thick. It's pretty much all lined, at least in the glom, it's all lined with simple squamous epithelium because it's endothelium, right? It's the inner lining of blood vessels. And so it's, there's not much mass to it. So the renal corpuscle is the combination of those two things, the glom in here and the capsule around the outside of it. What's going to happen in here is this is where all the filtration is going to occur. Blood is going to come in, and blood is going to come out, and in the process, a lot of it is going to leak out through the wall, and it's going to be collected in here, and this will be the beginnings of our urine. 
and head down through the tubules. And yeah, I just want to make sure. So the loop of Henley is just the straight descending, the loop on the yeah. bottom, and the well, straight we're descending. Gonna, I'm really getting ahead there, but yes. Okay. So none of the twisty crap. No, um, the, just the the, the 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 twisty part up here is just the glomerulus. What are the other two on the Oh, the distal convoluted tubules. Yeah. They're they're That's not they're their own parts. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. The nephron, the, whole entire thing. the nephron is the entire little tubule that goes from, this is the start of the nephron right here, the capsule basically, goes down, goes through all of this, goes down, goes back up, goes through all of this. When the, ne the nephron dumps into the collecting duct right here, that's kind of the end of it being a, uh, the nephron. Okay. Probably shouldn't do this. It's probably what screwed me up before. But. Okay. All right. So this glomerulus. We're going to go through this whole thing in very great detail, step by step, and hopefully you can catch every bit of it. The glomerulus itself is this glom of blood vessels here, and it consists of about 50 intertwining capillaries. I think I said 20 to 25. That's a little short. The blood comes into it via the afferent arteriole, which comes off of the cortical radiate artery, right? It leaves via the efferent arteriole. I've got it drawn in right here, leaving. After that, it drains into these peritubular capillaries. The veins start to gather back up. They all collect all the blood and head about eventually dropping into the um, in a cave. Now let me draw you, uh, let me give you a little visual here if I can. Let's think about this. Remember I said all of this system of arteries is all arteries. It's not veins, it's all arteries. So what we have <coughs> is we have an artery that's going in and then it does all these glomerular things and then you've got an artery that comes out. In the process of the blood flowing through this glomerulus, a lot of the blood, a lot of the fluid, not the red cells, but a lot of the fluid is going to be pushed out through, this, through these arterial walls. And they're kind of special. They're made for this. They're made to filter blood for the kidney. But think about it like this. Let's just say this is your basically your coffee filter okay at home and you pour water into the top and then the water comes out at the bottom and the only thing that's determining of the pressure of that is gravity right so it's a little bit higher pressure on top than it is on the bottom but this is different you've got pressure coming in here under a pressure and it's going through this glommy thing and things are leaking out of it and then the pressure is going to come out over here on the efferent exiting side. Now just for a minute think about this. If this side was really big, let's say this is a big old artery going in, okay, and this over here it's just a little bitty artery going out. Do you think you would make more filtrate? Would you push more out through the walls? Because there's a huge difference in the size from here to there. And if it was set up like this, so that your afferent arterial was really big, supplying lots of blood to the glomerulus, and the, on the other side, the, the efferent vessel was really small, not letting much out, then it's going to make a lot of fluid leak out of the sides of these arterioles and be caught out here in this thing right here, right? So it's going to filter a lot. You're going to create a lot of filtrate, we call it. On the other hand, 
let's just say you're running that marathon and the pipe going into this glomerulus is really small. But on this side over here, it's chilling and it's really big. Okay, so it's going to be really easy for the blood to get out and stay in the arterial, right? So in this case, efferents are small, afferents are large, we're going to make less filtrate. We're going to push less out through the filter, which surrounds all of these arteries are big pieces of filter paper, basically. Okay, does that make some sense? So a lot of what we're going to be talking about for the next couple of days is what happens when this gets smaller and you send less blood to the glomerulus to start with, what happens if this gets bigger and you send more blood to the glomerulus, and what happens over here on this side when this gets smaller or whether this gets larger. That's the concept I kind of want you to keep in mind as we, as we go farther into this stuff. Okay, so blood's going in through the afferent arterial, it's coming out through the afferent arterial, and what, um, once it flows out here, then it goes on and does this, uh, gets into these peritubular capillaries and leaves and goes back into the venous system. The part that didn't get filtered out, okay? All right, filtration only occurs in this one spot, okay? This is the only place in your whole kidney where filtration occurs, is right here in this renal corpuscle, right there, okay? Water and dissolved solutes are forced out into the capsular space, and when that occurs, it, pre it creates this fluid, which is located right here, which is called filtrate, and it should be protein-free, it should be about the same as blood plasma. In other words, it pushes the plasma out, but nothing else has really changed about it. There should not be any blood that got out, because the slits aren't big enough to let the blood cells out. Okay, and I think that's one point you need to think about at this point, is that when it does create this filtrate, and this filtrate is the start of what we're going to make urine from, we're going to add to it and subtract to it and process it in all kinds of different ways. But when we make the filtrate to start with, it's very similar to blood plasma. Okay? All right. As, the, as this filtrate, which is formed only in this one place right here in the glomerulus, filtrate comes to here, it's now going to go all the way through this renal tubule which I've got drawn here, and we'll have several more nice pictures in a minute. But most of the water that we, we push out of the system over here, between the afferent and efferent, we're going to reabsorb it back into our body. Okay? We, can't, we can't afford to lose very much. 